crystals, my happiness was short-lived at the moment I had children. How was I going to trust this artificial heat source to heat up their food? I don't care about convenience. I wanted no radiation leaking on my made-from-scratch meals. So I threw the gigantic bugger in the bin and I've been radiation-free for over 15 years. The context for this video is this individual was talking about microwaves. Essentially claiming that microwaves emit radiation into our food and we would not want to be consuming any food with radiation inside of it. Let's take a second to talk about how microwaves actually work. A microwave is describing the electromagnetic wave emitted most commonly in microwaves that reflects off the metal interior and stays contained inside of the microwave. And the way that microwaves cook our food is quite fascinating. As you can see, these rays are constantly oscillating, meaning they are constantly changing structure and direction. In fact, this occurs over 2 billion times per second. These rays will attract the negatively charged particles inside of our food. However, because of the speed at which these rays are oscillating, these food particles essentially continue to change direction and begin vibrating. This vibration causes food particles to rub together, producing friction and therefore producing heat. Essentially, a simple way to think about it is the way that microwaves cook our food is by causing the food to shake vigorously and begin producing its own heat, the same way that humans begin to shiver to warm up. Obviously, that is a simplistic explanation. And now the radiation that most people are afraid of is ionizing radiation, which is emitted by something such as an x-ray. However, microwaves emit non-ionizing radiation that does not have enough energy to remove electrons and damage molecules and does not pose the risk of causing DNA mutations, but is fantastic for heating. And importantly, non-ionizing radiation does not emit anything that is radioactive into our food. The polar molecules inside of our food that begin to heat up are things such as water, salt, sugar such as glucose, and proteins. However, fats are considered non-polar, which is why it's very difficult to heat up something such as oil inside of the microwave. But very importantly, when water is heated, it begins to expand, meaning food high in water content or in salt and protein content has an increased likelihood to explode in the microwave. Compared to other traditional cooking methods, specifically boiling, microwaves are one of the better options for preserving the vitamins and minerals inside of our food, including being better for vitamin E retention, more favorable for the water-soluble vitamins including vitamin A, vitamin C, and the B vitamins, having little to no effect on vitamin K, and possibly increasing sodium, potassium, and phosphorus and they could be a favorable method for cooking many frozen vegetables that contain high concentrations of things such as vitamin E. Microwaves also appear to improve the antioxidant potential of proteins, as well as of dietary fats, and the antioxidant capacity of starch, and improves their resistance to oxidation, which is the process by which fats can begin to rancidify and have truly detrimental effects on the body. Microwaves can actually slow down the digestibility of starch, making them favorable for those with glycemic issues such as diabetics, and decreasing the total absorbable calories, therefore making it favorable for beauty enthusiasts. At the same time, they can actually improve the digestibility of protein. However, the longer and higher temperature that you microwave proteins, regardless of the method, can actually begin to decrease the protein's digestibility. Microwaves are quite interesting when it comes to allergenicity, as they appear to decrease the allergenicity of things such as gluten, prawns, and possibly certain nuts, but they may absolutely increase the allergenicity of certain foods, such as peanuts and milk, so it is highly individual dependent. And the other caveat I will mention with microwaves is they have what are referred to as hot spots and cold spots. Hotspots are the portion of the microwave that draw food particles to them to the greatest degree, whereas cold spots do not cause food to vibrate to the same degree, meaning that this portion of the food may be inadequately cooked compared to the portion sitting in the middle, which can essentially increase our risk of consuming food that is inadequately cooked, or consuming it cold and being unhappy with the taste and texture. With that being said, despite there being a lot of misinformation about microwaves, the process by which they cook foods actually appear to be favorable for nutrient retention, favorable for limiting the amount of detrimental molecules produced during heating of food, and do not emit radiation into the food that we are consuming. 
With that being said, if you would like an individualized approach to your nutrition and lifestyle to optimize your health, energy, and body composition, send me a DM to sign up for coaching.